Hello, Bible Fellowship Church. I want to welcome you guys to another episode of Digging Deeper. Mm -hmm. And I am so excited. I'm here with Pastor Bob Beckett from The Dwelling Place. Bob, we're neighbors. Yeah. I mean, we can't really be right. much closer than that. What, a block and a half away? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, man, God has called you to be a light in this valley. You've been here for so long, and God has used you in such profound ways. You know, I, and I, I was telling my wife the other day, by the way, that I think God brought you into my life. Um, I feel the same. Honestly, I do. Not just being reciprocal. Yeah, but I, I, God has connected me with you in a unique and a profound way, and it's blessed me. You know, I, you guys don't know this, mm -hmm. but um, Pastor Bob will, will call me periodically and, and encourage me, or he'll say, you know, hey, just the other day you came by and brought a book, which I'm reading through right now, which is incredible. Oh, good, good. Yeah. And, um, and so it's just been a tremendous encouragement for oh, me. Good. But, you know, God does that. Yeah. This is what he does. That's relationships. Yeah. That's relationships. Yeah. That's what uh, is beginning to happen between the churches. Absolutely. And the other pastors. Yeah. So. Yeah. We're seeing a unity here in the valley like we've never seen That's before. Right. That's right. You know, I wanted to take a minute and I wanted to talk with everybody about the events that are taking place in Israel. Hmm. You know, we, someone once said, uh, well, not just once, but recently, there was a gentleman who's just popped onto the scene and um, he's written a bunch of songs. And one of the lines in his songs was, is we're on the brink of the next world war. Hmm. And when I look out at the landscape of the world, especially the events that we're witnessing taking right. place in Absolutely. Israel, Bob, we're on the brink of the next world war. That's it. You know, and I, I, I've been preaching through the book of Acts with our people, and I, I, we've wow. been talking about what does it look like to be an Acts church. Wow. Um, and all those things. And I'm on a little series right now called The Church on Fire. Ooh. And uh, yeah, and Ooh. so we're, we're, uh, you know, we're looking at the way the Holy Spirit was working and right. empowering the lives of the early right. followers of Jesus right. in the churches. Yeah. And I'm wondering, you know, what the response of the church should be right now in light of mm. what God has showed us in the book of Acts right. and what we're witnessing in the right. world. Right. People are afraid. Yeah, they really are. And where are they turning to? Yeah. And what do they turn to? This is our greatest hour. This is a greatest opportunity. Yeah. And uh, I think that's why our unity and our voice speaking out, hungering, we hunger for what took place in the book of Acts. And the book of Acts was done without a church, mm. right? Yes. They didn't have church buildings. They didn't have all the trappings. What they did have was a passion for touching people's lives and changing lives supernaturally. Yeah. And that's what we're hungering for, yeah. a supernatural move of God. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I think therein lies the secret of the early church's success. Yeah. They, t they, they tapped in, if you will, into the power source. <laughs> that's a good way to put it. Right. They plugged into it. Right. And they did it through prayer, yeah. fasting, um, you know, God said, my house will be a house of prayer. Yeah, amen. He didn't say, this is convicting for me, Bob. He didn't say my house will be a house of preaching. Ouch. It, yeah, right? Yeah. He didn't say my house will be a house of worship. Oh. He said my house would be a house of prayer. There you go. And when the disciples asked Jesus a question, it's really one of the only, the only few questions that's recorded in the Gospels. They said, Jesus, would you teach us Yes. How to pray. Right. They didn't say, would you teach us how to preach? That's right. Would you, would you teach us how to worship? They didn't say that. They said, would you teach us how to pray? Yeah. Because I think therein lies the power. Yeah. And they'd witnessed it in Jesus' right. life. They did. As a matter of fact, they heard him because of John 17. He's in a walking prayer, conversational prayer with the Father, and they're listening in. And they're listening to him, John 17, they're listening to him talk about them to the Father. Mm. That's the pattern for the church. Yes. That's when he says, okay, here's the church. Yes. John 17, that was it. Yes. And he even told everyone, he says, and by the way, you guys, I'm going to have to leave. Because <laughs> if I don't leave, then I won't be able to send the helper, the That's Holy right. Spirit. That's right. And you need this helper. That's right. You need my spirit. That's right. And so he left, but he left leaving behind something even greater. Right, right. And, uh, and so one of the lines, we were talking about this just before we started the video. You know, Jesus says, upon this rock, he was talking to Peter, he says, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. 
and he said, I will build my church. Mm. You know, we, we were talking about, I think God's doing that in Hemet. I believe it. I really do. Yeah. Yeah, because we've watched the churches begin to move together. Yeah. The pastors are not in competition with one another. We're supporting one, one another. It's incredible. It looks and sounds in microcosm of what was taking place in the book of Acts in their heart. Even though they didn't plan it, yes. we've had to because we're breaking religious molds. Yes. We're breaking religious strongholds. Yes, yes. Yeah, and we are on the cusp of, I think, some difficult times. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't think there's any way to look at that other yeah. than that. And the, the things are changing rapidly. Our world is changing rapidly and it's not moving in a positive direction, Bob. Right. And so God, I think, is in some ways preparing his church for battle. Right. I, I, I get the strong sense You're that right. it's time for the church to rise up, mm -hmm. to be equipped, to be strong right. in the Lord, right. and to fight the battles yeah. that are coming. And these are not battles with guns, Bob. These are battles with, Absolutely. Uh, uh, you know, with spiritual weapons. These are battles against the invisible forces of darkness. The yeah. weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Yes. Mighty to God. Yes. And right here. Yes. On your knees. Oh, yes. I want to end with the story I was just telling you a minute ago. You know, I, as, a, as a young preacher, I was determined to hear the great preacher, Billy Graham, oh, give a man. message. Wow. And I'd, I'd listened to some of his messages, you know, on the radio and whatnot at that point. And, and I was so excited to be able to hear him. And he was nearing the end of his ministry. And the Billy Graham Ministries were announcing that he wasn't going to be doing any more crusades and that they were nearing the end. And so this is over 20 years ago now. And he was down in San Diego. And I made it a point to get down to that crusade. Wow. Wow. You know, I'm a young man learning all about church ministry. I'm on fire for the Lord. I'm like, <laughs> I, I want to preach like Billy Graham preaches. Going to change you know? the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And so I'm so excited to hear the great preacher preach. I get down there and the place is packed. You know, it's in the big, wow. one of the big stadiums down there. It's just packed. And, and he gets up to preach. And, you know, at this point, he's, he's in his 80s at this mm. point, And he's starting to slow down a little bit. And, um, and I'm sitting there listening with bated breath. Like, what's this, how's this guy going to say it? What yeah. stories are going to tell? How's he going to bring it all together? Yeah. And he spoke for 15, maybe 20 minutes. And he gave a simple gospel message. And as he started wrapping it up, a thought came into my mind and I was, I was disappointed. I was like, oh. that's the great Billy Graham? Waiting for a message. Like, yeah, I, I, could, I could do that. <laughs> like, Lord, this is what I've been waiting for. You could, but it wouldn't and happen. Then, <laughs> and, then, and then he finishes with an invitation for mm. people to come forward. Wow. And I'm not kidding you, Bob. I think 10,000 people got out of their I seats. I and it. walked down onto that field, and I was floored, yeah. speechless. Yeah. And the, the thought kept resonating in my mind. I'm like, that was not the best message I ever heard. Yeah. But the response was undeniably powerful. Absolutely. And the Holy Spirit was just heavy in that place. And you know, the power was, I, I think, obviously, in the message, because you can't preach the word. Oh, power. absolutely. But I yeah. think the real power was it in his hunger and his compassion for souls. Absolutely. So when he got to the altar call, it was, yes. it was full tilt. It was everything he was yes. about. He was hungry for people. Yeah. Well, and I think the, you know, the thing for me, the takeaway was, Lord, I could prepare the best message on the planet. Oh, yeah. But if your Holy Spirit is not in it, That's right. it's going to fall on deaf That's ears. Right. That's right. And the, the opposite is true. I could preach... The simplest gospel message ever mm -hmm. that, that even a young child could understand. And if the power of the Holy Spirit's in it, it'll move mountains and change people's lives. That's right. That's right. It's all hinging on the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And Chris, you hit the core of it right there. That's that's the heart of this whole thing. That's what this whole thing is about. It's about it, we've got to reach out to people. Yeah. And I think God is doing something between the churches. We've talked about this before. I think we're looking, we're on a precipice of a great move of God in our community. Can't tell you about the rest of the world, but I can tell you about this valley. Yes. God's getting ready to do something. Well, he's not already ready. He's in the process. Yes. And I'm glad to do it with you. Oh, thank you, Bob. This is, I mean, is there any better thing to do? No. Is there any better place this to is, be? This is, I mean, this is <laughs> awesome. <laughs>
This is fun. <laughs> this is, it really is. Yeah. It's really, yeah. It really is because yeah. it touches the core of your being. Yeah. And it's touching them. Yeah. As they yeah, watch is. and they listen to this, their hearts are being stirred as well. Yeah. You know, God's moving in you too. You, we're not the only ones. God's moving in you. Mm -hmm. And he's moving not only in you, but through you. And you can feel that. Trust him for it. Yes. Well, this has been a lot of fun, Bob. Yes. We gotta, do this. we gotta do this again. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's do it God brother. bless you. Let's do it. And thank you guys for joining us. And I just want to invite you to come join us on Sunday, Dwelling Place Worships. What time is your service on Sunday? Bob? 10 a.m. 10 o'clock. So join Bob over at the Dwelling Place at 10, um, or you can join us here at BFC at 1030, and uh, you can find both of us online. So anyways, God bless you guys, and hope you're having a great week. And we're praying that the power of the Holy Spirit Amen. would fill up your lives and that you would be used in mighty ways for his kingdom. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you soon.